Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Management and Team Skills. Hopefully, you have already completed the DISC assessment that is in the week two folder. It's about 10 minutes, and um, I think it's one of the most interesting things that we will do this semester. Typically, we will go around the classroom in person, and I will uh, kind of guess your letters now that I've gotten to know you a couple of weeks um, in advance. And I, I will say that my um, my average of accuracy is fairly high. So anyway, but we're going to talk through that since I don't get to do that this round. We're going to talk through DISC. It's really um, something that I think is very easy to remember. And I have students come back to me um, after the class has been over several semesters and say, this is something that I still use. So I'm glad that you have decided to watch this video because it is that one thing I think that you can take away and use immediately at home or at work. So what is DISC? Well, D-I-S-C, you know, it's it's a personality profile similar to the, some of the other things that you've done in the past, perhaps Myers-Briggs, et cetera. The difference in DISC is that it's easy to remember and it's easy to apply to others, which makes it very, very powerful. So we're going to go through each one of these. As we know, behavior is one of those things that it's very dependent. It's very situational, as I like to call it. So it's flexible and it's dynamic, right? In the morning, I may be in a, a grumpy mood until I've had my coffee and then my behavior changes. Uh, maybe I'm fine until someone cuts me off in traffic or, you know, um, my uh, spouse spends too much money or something like that. And then that changes um, exactly my mood for the day, correct? So it, it's ever changing, you know? There could be something that happens that puts you in a great mood. So these are these are things that we can observe, we see. This is a very natural sort of um, type of thing uh, that we witness in other people. The one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, it is that behavior is highly influenced by our individual thoughts and beliefs. And as we get into it, we're going to talk about what that value system does to behavior and how easy or difficult that it is to change something when it's rooted in a value system. Okay, what is DISC? Well, DISC is, like I said before, it's a personality profile system. It's really one of the most successful that we've seen. And it's something that you will see now has kind of usurped a lot of the ones that you've seen in the past, like a Myers-Briggs, because it is so easy to understand and apply. We can use that to, um, we always say that there is no I in team. Well, I will tell you that there is an I in team. There is you. You are the I in team. Um, so the I in team is actually me. And there is a me in team because you can't change anybody else's behaviors. But if you understand someone else's behaviors, you can change your own to have a very productive and efficient type of working environment. So that is the me or the I in team. So the DISC profile, it's not a test. You need to go through it and be very, very honest. Um, it's not as though I'm going to look at your letters and be like, oh, so that's what they are. No, nope, not at all. There are every combination of letters are very, very important to the structure of a personal relationship, a professional relationship, a professional team. These are all good. Um, they all have you know, wonderful attributes, and they all have things that we should be mindful of and aware of as kind of our blind spots. So you can't pass or fail it, and there is no bad set of letters. You know, Myers-Briggs tend to make to people think that there's these letters that are executive leaders, and there are these other letters where you're just the other people. This is not like that. So don't get caught up in trying to answer it a certain way because you think it will make you look better. That is not the case at all. All right, so it's to help us understand ourselves enough, recognize our own behavioral uh, patterns, and then figure out how another person is reacting because of their disc profile. And that is the reason I like to do the fortune telling type of thing of telling you what your disc profile is before you take the exam, because um, I want you to see just how easy it is to understand other people and then make the adjustments from your own end. Okay, like I said before, there are no good or bad profiles. There's nothing that's judgmental about this at all. Every profile has strengths and weaknesses, and that's pretty indicative of anything in life, correct, for a uh, person's behavior. Okay, so what do they stand for? We're going to talk through what they stand for um, because this is just a little bit of mumbo jumbo, but here's what they are. D is dominance. That doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. A lot of people be like, oh my gosh, that means I'm overbearing. Not at all. I'm a D 
And what that just means is these are natural born leaders. These are the people who you walk into a room and somebody has to take charge. They're going to be more natural at that. Everybody has D in them. They do. You're going to find different places on the, on the, um, uh, you know, on the pro profile that you're going to fill out that is going to demonstrate that you have a D. If you're a parent, you're a D. You can't afford not to be a D, right? You have to be in control. So don't think that dominance is a bad thing and that we definitely all have it. And I, I is influence. I like to call I the it factor, right? There are just people that we're naturally drawn to because they're they're just effervescent in a way, right? They are, um, they are, you know, they're intriguing, right? It factor, intriguing. You can think of it like that too. Um, you're drawn to them. Oftentimes, these people have these bigger than life personalities. They walk into a room and it just, they consume the room, right? All eyes draw to them. So that's kind of my eye. We see actors, actresses, celebrities, um, musicians. We see, um, you know, comedians. These are all big eyes. Politicians are an eye. Um, this is what they use. And the reason it's called influence is something we'll talk about here in just a bit. Steady, our steady eddies, the S's. These are the people who keep things moving along. If you don't have a steady eddy in your life or you're not able to easily get into that, that S role, you need to figure that out because S's, we need S's. They keep us moving along. They're the ones who keep things pushing forward. We can't have all type A dominant personalities. We've got to have the people who are making sure that society is functioning and moving and pacing along. We can't all be performers. So the S's are absolutely critical. And having some type of S when it's necessary in your life is very, very important. Um, people who um, completely lack an S um, and, and as another combination of, of different things, but an S um, and a C, if they lack any S or C, um, these are sort of behavioral characteristics that we see of people who tend end up being on, you know, those television shows about hoarding and things like that. They lack that capacity um, to kind of keep themselves on track and have some sort of organizational habits in place. And that's just a total absence of these, which I've never seen in a single person or student in all the years I've been doing this. So it is rare that that S is completely absent. The next one is C, conscientiousness. I Think of this more as um, calculating and people go, oh, calculating, that's manipulative. I don't mean it in a in that capacity. I mean it more in the analytical capacity, just because that C kind of helps me um, think through that. This person is going to be very analytical, very organized. Um, they are going to be that calculating because they're always constantly calculating and analyzing. So let's talk through them even a little bit more. What about Let's do a scenario. What if I was shopping for groceries? What would each one of these um, be representative of? This is a pure D, I, S, or C, okay? This is not necessarily somebody who's a combination of one or more. And 100% of people are a combination of one or more. Well, maybe 99% of people. Rarely do I see somebody that got scored zero and everything else and just um, has one letter. So let's assume that they scored zero and everything else and they just have the one letter. This is what that person would be like. A D, impulse shopper, no list. They know where they're going. They know what they want. They, you know, they just coming through. They're plowing through the lanes. They're probably in and out very quickly if they're shopping for groceries. And I, they're going to tell you where everything is in the store, whether you ask it or not, right? Have you ever been on an aisle and suddenly the person starts telling you that this is the best spaghetti sauce they've ever had? And you're you're looking around like, oh, they're they're they are talking to me. That's our eyes. Those are the, the eyes. They make friends wherever they go. And S, they're very prepared. You know, they have a list or maybe it's a mental list, but they have a list. They know what they need. They're not, an S is not going to end up at home with, you know, zucchini, uh, you know, macaroni and cheese and peanut butter, and they can't make a meal out of it. And S is tracking through and kind of has a good idea, a good plan. S is often coupled with C. We'll see S, Cs a lot. It's one of the most common things I see out there. And a C is, a, you know, that analytical, that calculating person. But if you're a pure C and you have no other characteristics at D, I, or an S, and you were at shopping, you would probably have a list, coupons, a calculator. You'd probably organize your cart based on, I need the heavy stuff. I need the lighter stuff. I need the cold stuff. I need the hot stuff. That would be a pure C. And some of you may be laughing because you do that anyway. And that just means you're probably a very high C. And there's nothing wrong with that. I hate it when my husband just tosses the bread into the cart. I'm like, the bread has to ride in the place where we don't have a toddler or kid, the bread has to ride in that section and he just never gets it. So we just don't go grocery shopping together. And sometimes that works best. Okay, 
So here's some of the ways to look at this as well. And we think about this outgoing, that D and I, like I told you, that dominating, that 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 um, influence. Those are very outgoing types of personalities. And a D and an I together, whoa ho! You've got to think about it. You think about, oh my gosh, those are really our our all star you know, type A performer, politician type people. They are absolutely DIs across the board. If you're going to put yourself in that type of a position, this is exactly um, who a DI is. Okay. And if you're DC, right, you're dominating, but you're very analytical. You're very task oriented. I understand the strategy. I understand how to get it done. That DC. I tend to be a DC. That's who I am. And and I will find, you will find that most of your um, your professors are probably a DC or a CS, okay? But they're going to rank very high in that C just because of the process and, and all that's involved with earning a doctorate degree and the research and all the things that you have to do. But a lot of them are going to be DC. Okay, so what if I am a C and an S? I combinate, I, I do there. This says reserved. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I think these are just really solid, loyal people who make very fair, equitable decisions based on good information. So that SC, that's a very important role. And, and, and it's always good that we see so many people in that area. And then we've got this IS. I find that this is... Um, this is not something I see very often, an IS type of role. Um, these are people-oriented roles. We do see this a bit more in HR type situations, um, but uh, it is not something that I definitely see very much. It's super outgoing, but also very even keel. Um, that's not something that that comes up um, quite often. So this are the four and how they kind of play together. Um, typically, people will have two that dominate together. Some people will have three or four. I always tell people, if you end up with three or four, take it in a different frame of mind later on um, and see if you end up with two that 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 filter to the top. It is situational because there are days, they're part of the days where I, one of these will filter to the top more than the other. Like I said, your parent, there are times of the day where you are more D, even if you're naturally an SC type of personality. Okay, D. Let's describe them. Let's get into it. They are direct. They're driven, right? They are, they tend to be daring and bold and innovative. Okay. People will call them strong will. They tend to be tend to be considered confident. Some people will call them arrogant, depending on how much D they have, right? These are all things to keep in mind with our D type people. Then we've got um uh they're motivated by winning. We they're competitive by nature. They value people who are competent, who can get results. They actually don't want to micromanage you. They want to set you off because they've got a whole list and agenda of things that they're working on anyway. They want you to be able to do your job and do your job well. What is a D quote? Well, uh, Nora Roberts writes as J.D. Robb, and this is one of the things that she said. What's the point of playing if winning isn't the goal? That's our D. That's who they are. Okay, how do we communicate with them? Well, we got to give them the bottom line. OK, we can't make generalizations and say things like, well, basically, maybe it might be. Nope. we need to give them something concrete because they need to act on it. Um, don't repeat yourself. When I repeat myself in my classes, I can see that the D's are going, oh, my gosh, move on, move on, move on. And as I've told some of you guys in your groups, redundancy is just something that just, oh, my gosh, when I start seeing redundancies in your final projects or papers, that really goes, oh, gosh, I've read this over and over and over and over again. You know, be succinct. Don't be redundant. And that's partly because I am a D. I repeat myself in in this class several times and, and phrase things in different ways because most people are not Ds. A lot of people in the class will not be a D and they need to hear that content in very different ways. This person will need to focus on the solutions. They are immediately problem solving when you hand them some sort of an issue. And that um, that is great in a emergency situation. We need people who are uh, emergency and first responders to be Ds, especially the captains of those teams, because they are immediately going into problem solving mode. What can we do to fix this? Okay, an I. These are very charming people, right? They're intriguing. Um, they're optimistic. They can be very persuasive because you know, you know, that's why these people are make fantastic salespeople. You want to buy from them. You want to listen to them. You're enraptured, um, and that is part of the reason why uh, they will use celebrities to sell products. They will use them to um, try to push political positions and things like that because we're enraptured with them, and they are very persuasive. All right. 
So what about an I? Well, they're motivated by social recognition. And that makes sense if you're in that limelight, uh, if you're in a celebrity uh, entertainer of some sort, a uh, politician, they want that social recognition. Um, they value coaching. They want that freedom of expression and individuality. They want to be who they are. You know, I'm a be me. That's who the eyes are. Okay. And what about who's a famous I? Anne Frank is. Whoever is happy will make others happy too. This idea that through my performance, through my effervescence, other people are happy and need and want to be around me. How do we communicate with them? Well, you can share your experiences, right? Um, give them time to talk and express and do all these sort of things. Focus more on the positives. Let them have their say. Let them speak through things. That is the type of person that an I is. They do not like to be interrupted. So let them have that story time. Okay, our S's are our steady eddies. Um, they're patient, they're loyal, they're kind, they're stable, they're fair. That's who our S's are. Um, they are motivated by cooperation, opportunities to um, that are, to succeed that have gratitude and appreciation, right? They're humble. Um, they are loyal. This is one of the key, key features of an S person. They're incredibly loyal and that um, they value that security and safety and friendships. Okay, an S, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the invariable mark of wisdom is to see the miraculous in the common. I love that quote, I think it's wonderful and I think it does a good job of describing that S and their sort of outlook on life. All right, how do we communicate with them? You gotta be personal, right? They value that loyalty, that friendship and those connections. Take the time to provide some clarification though. All right, if you don't know um, why something's being done, they don't need all, all the details. But if you say, hey, we have to shut down early four days a week and your pay is going to be cut, you know, at least some sort of brief description or uh, explanation of why that is. The reason why is because we don't want to cut any jobs. And unfortunately, we just didn't have the sales that we needed. That's going to suffice for them. They're going to understand that and they're going to be loyal and they're going to hop on board with that. Don't be aggressive or confrontational with folks who are S. It will not go any well and they'll probably shut down and they will not be very efficient team members. Um, if you've got a spouse who is an S, um, this also will not work. You need to walk away and come back when you're in a better frame of mind because they are going to shut down and you're not going to, to win or get anywhere or resolve the, um, uh, the situation right then. A C, they are um, analytical. This is just really what our C is. They tend to be diplomatic uh, they tend to be very reserved. They tend to be um, people who are observing things. That quiet person who is observing everything. They think of life as kind of a chessboard and they know where every piece is at any given time um, on a personal and professional level. Um, they are, they understand the world in that capacity. Uh, a C person, they're motivated by these opportunities to share their knowledge and how good their work is. They take a lot of pride in that. So if you've got a C person, that that praise for that knowledge, that that detail, that expertise, the quality of that work is very important to them. And they're very motivated by having somebody else recognize that. They value accuracy, okay? Um, Longfellow, it takes less time to do a thing right than explain why you did it wrong. That's our C. Okay, communicating with the C. Facts and details. While the S would have been fine with you telling me the reason we needed to shut down an hour early every day is because we didn't want to lay anybody off and we didn't have sales, the C is going to need more than that. The C is going to be like, really? Well, what department? What line did we not get enough sales on? How far were we below sales? What do we need to do to get back to that? They're going to need even more information. They want you to minimize the pep talk, but they want you to provide good information. And a lot of times the C will want that in writing. They want to be able to reflect on it later on. They want to, you know, kind of uh, cover themselves later on. They may follow up with you in writing, um, but you need to be very diplomatic with them and you need to attack this and approach things with facts, figures. These, these kind of superlatives and, and these sort of um, subjective situations are not the way to get a C on board or to win an argument with a C. Okay. Let's do another one. We did the grocery store. Let's do an elevator. A D walks up, he gets on the elevator and closes the door. He doesn't want to wait for anybody else. How many of you guys have pushed that little button over and over and over again? And you're like, oh, they're coming. Um, and I, they let others in. There's always room for one more. If, come on, come on, come on, hold the door, right? That is our I. And S, 
they're not really sure which one to get on. They're trying to figure out the fastest way. Should I take the stairs? Should I take the the elevator? Should I wait on this one? Man, this is taking a long time. Those are the people that you see on the highway switching lanes, trying to always get, you know, move ahead somehow. Um, the C, they're going to kind of count everybody. They're going to give you this look if it looks like there's too many people. No, we actually can't have one more. We're This load is 800 pounds. There's 12 people in here. This isn't going to work. They're automatically, may, they may not say anything because they're not a D. If they're a DC though, you can bet that they'll say, hey, this that's too much weight on this elevator. But if they're more of a DS, they're just sitting there suffering in silence over the fact that they know there's too many people in the elevator. So just see how those combinations can change. Um, okay, so a D, I want it done and I want it done now. That's our D. Our I, let me tell you what happened. You're not going to believe this. That's an I. And S, we're all just in this together. So let's just work as a team. Can't we get along? All right. A C, um, can you provide some documentation for that? That's our C, okay? But these all have these strengths, but sometimes they can be weaknesses, right? So if a D who is fantastic at being a leader, they can become autocratic. They can become somebody, it's my way or the highway. And that's a real problem if somebody gets very accustomed to being in that role and not letting others have a voice. And I, they may be see themselves as wonderful at, at promoting and, and, and people love them. But eventually what may end up happening is um, they, become, they become manipulative, right? Because everybody's giving them what they want. Everybody will do what they say. And they end up manipulating that. It starts out in a way that, um, and we see this with a lot of, you know, celebrities and entertainers that kind of go bad um, and, and they start they start expecting it. Right. They start out really friendly. But after a while of people telling them how wonderful and amazing and great they are, they expect it. And then they become, you know, um, a little bit rude and manipulative as a result of that success and that headiness, if you will. Um, and S, they're steady and agreeable, but they may give in. Ah, just whatever. It's fine. Just whatever you guys want. Watch this in your team meetings. Don't let people just be like, yeah, just whatever you guys want, whatever you guys want. No, what do you also want? I want everybody to have a voice. A C, they're good at analyzing, but they can become indecisive, right? That, you know, um, paralysis by analysis. And in this eight weeks, there's no way to have that paralysis by analysis because it's, there's just simply not enough time to do so. Disc in teams. If you know who you are, then you can work more effectively with someone else. Because if you know you're naturally a DI and you've got an SC on a team, it helps you know how to better communicate with them, right? I can't run in, you know, guns a blazing, you know, kind of, you know, coming in hot situation if I've got an SC. They need me to come in, be a little lower key, a little less aggressive, a little less in your face, and I'm going to work a little bit better with them. I also know that they may struggle with, um, you know, just letting me have my way and I need to prop and prod them into getting their voice heard. This is how this will work. If you've got an eye and they're always wanting to come in and joke and tell stories and do whatever, we you need to rein that in. Maybe you set the first you know, five or 10 minutes of your meeting for sharing and, and having some fun and a laugh and whatnot before you settle down into work. Um, sometimes that works. You know, we often have times where people, I used to work at a place where somebody would just stop by my desk every single day. And, um, you know, it got to be where I was like, man, we're either both going to get um, in trouble from this from somebody. They're going to think I'm also goofing off. And I and I wanted to hear it. I, I, but sometimes you have to be in a position to say that I definitely want to hear that. Do you have time for lunch? Or let me get this done because, you know, they're really asking for this. And I, but I can't wait to hear that story because it sounds awesome. You have to find the right way to communicate with them. All right. Let's see here. Let's pop ahead a bit. Um, this is interesting. What is the, the, you know, the golden rule, the platinum rule, if you will, do unto others the way they would like being done to, right? Treat people the way they want to be treated. And if you understand who their personality is, you understand how they expect and how they thrive with interactions. And that is very, very important that you understand. If you have an eye on your group, you know that they thrive on that accolade and that, you know, that kind of, you know, that praise and to be able to preen and do that. Find a way to do that. If you've got a C, we've already talked about the fact that they love for you to be able to be like, oh my gosh, you brought in all these facts and figures. This is going to make everything so much better. You know, share your expertise and your knowledge with us. Give them that platform to do that. So understand all these ways they work together to maximize the efficiency of your group and team this semester. Okay, 
Um, there's, there's some other things that we have to keep in mind too. Disc is one of the most important things, but there is something called um, Belbin's team roles. And um, researcher Meredith Belbin, he came up with these three sort of categories of, of different types of teams, these action oriented roles, we have people oriented roles, and we have thought oriented roles. Um, they can overlap. Uh, but they make a lot of sense. And when you think about, we've got these personalities and then what sort of roles uh, really make the most sense. And I wouldn't worry too much about these names, uh, more, you know, whether or not they are a thinking role or an action or a people role. Uh, you know, the names themselves don't mean much, but, you know, these kind of ideas, think about um, who these are and how they can um, function within your individual groups. Many, your groups specifically, because they're only four to six people, you'll have more than one person kind of um, doing each one of these roles. But these are also good roles to consider in your team charter. You're certainly not required to. I have done that in the past, but um, I, I've, I've let off on that a little bit. But it can be a good way to start thinking about the roles in your team. So let's think about these action-oriented roles. What does that mean? It's it's the somebody who is, um, they're helping to get things done, right? Um, if we think about um, somebody like a shaper, this uh, center one here, they're trying to figure out the way to, to get the most out of the team. How do we motivate the team, all right, rather than quit? this They're the motivator, the shaper is. Um they are uh, they're 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 usually extroverts. They're usually those I's and D's that are motivating and and trying to keep that personal communication going. That's our shaper. What about an implementer? That's also an action oriented role. Um, these are the people who say, "Okay, that's good. Let we've started with a big broad idea about our our food truck. Now we've got to turn it into something that's an actual plan." So they're very good at taking these conceptual ideas and forming a plan with them. So they're very important people to have this implementer. We can all have good ideas all day long, and most of us do, but it takes an implementer to move it from concept to reality, and in, in this case, concept to business plan. Okay, the completer, the finisher. Um, these, are the per these are the folks who, um, they're fantastic to have as you get down toward the end of your project because they have that superior eye for detail. Are we missing anything? Did we meet the rubric? Um, does, does grammatically spelling, uh, you know, all parts and pieces. These are the people that will help make sure that at the end, everything is there that you need and want to be there for your final project. Okay, these people-oriented roles that we're now in. Um, these are people who are really good at, um, you know, they're helping to guide the team. These are really S type roles, you know, um, S and maybe a little bit of I in there. Um, they're they're good at delegating. Um, you may have an SD in here. I would say this is tends to be an SI or an SD, depending on which way you're going with it. Um, but um, they're very good. They can manipulate. So you got to be careful where there, uh, but uh, they are kind of good at making sure that the team is functioning and continuing forward. Um, oftentimes they're rallying people as well. They're pulling people together. They're not motivating them like a shaper, but they're making sure that everybody's coordinated. This is when we're meeting. This is what we're doing. Um, other people oriented role, the team worker. This is a fantastic person because they're the person that's going to help you resolve conflicts when they inevitably arise. Then it may not be a huge major, you know, I'm not going to talk to you for three days type of conflict. It may just be something like we disagree on something. Um, and this person is very good at showing, demonstrating both sides of things and then helping people come to an agreement. So uh, that is, they're a great person to have from that perspective. Another uh, people-oriented role, the resource investigator. Um, they're extroverts, right? Um, they are quick thinkers. They tend to network. Um, they, they, they're, they love the thrill of the project and meeting with everybody. So this person is going to be um, really that traditional I type person. Uh, they love the group and they, they look forward to it. They're like, oh, good. We get to see each other and, and work on this project. They're the people when they took a team class, they were like, right on. I love it. I love working with other people. You know, a lot of people don't, but these people do. Okay, the thought-oriented roles are thinkers, okay? The monitor evaluator, these are the critical thinkers, right? They're the ones who go, they'll play, you know, devil's advocate. They're going to look at the information. These are very C-type people. Um, they're going to, the, the, the difference is this particular person is going to be a um, the, the, somebody who they don't just bog themselves down so far. They critically analyze the information and then they know they need to move forward. 
They are. So they're, you know, they tend to be a very sort of DC type of person. They know I need to look at it, but I need to go ahead and continue moving forward. Um, our another thought oriented role is the specialist. Okay. Um, this is the type of person where um, they really want, they're what we consider a subject matter expert, right? They're going to come in, they have this expert knowledge, and you may end up having somebody on your team who is this type of person. Often they're a C, they don't have to be, um, and they could be paired with anything because they bring a very specific set of knowledge. If you've got somebody on your team who has experience in the food industry, experience in food trucks, they really are your specialist. They are a subject matter expert. They will understand food costs. They'll understand, may have somebody who's an expert in transportation or um, somebody who understands all of the permits and the things required. They would be a specialist. They're very important. And if you can have one of those on your team, most teams won't um, definitely use them to the fullest. All right. Our final thought oriented role is our what we call plants. I mean, I don't love that name, but there you go. That's what they are. Um, they can be incredibly innovative. And sometimes they're so out there and so wild with their ideas that people don't really consider those. But as I've told some of the groups, it's much easier to take this big wild idea and kind of pare it down than it is to take a really small idea and make it big. So they are very innovative type of people. The problem is they oftentimes do better in working alone. So um, they don't do well with negative criticism, and but they love praise. So we're, you kind of have to work through that. Um, they're, you know, very um, artistic, if you will. And so we have to kind of think and, you know, having their work or their thoughts criticized, um, it, it feels like they're criticizing their art. So kind of think through that. That is our disc and our behavior for the week two. Um, I appreciate you guys for taking a listen and I will see you in the next video. So thank you so much. And like I always say, make sure that you stop um, and email me, text me, set up a Zoom, call me if you need to. If you've got anything going on, I'm terrible at reading minds, but I'm great at reading emails. So uh, I am happy to reach out to you and I'm looking forward to continuing to get to know you guys all this semester. We'll talk to, we'll talk soon.